Hi guys, this is Dr. Christine, your Relationship and Mindset Master Doctor and your Leverage for Change. So today I want to speak about why our actions will always outperform our thoughts. We have, many of us have thoughts that just keep coming, keep coming every single day and what it does is kind of bombard your mind. It bombards your mind. There's this constant bombardment of these thoughts and it's funny because a lot of these thoughts are always the same thoughts just recurring over and over again, over and over again. We may try breathing, we may try to intentionally focus to kind of try and rein these thoughts in, but they're always there kind of tapping and begging for your attention, right? Yet we want to create a change. We want to create change that um, will last, something that we can manage our thoughts, right? And I always say to my clients that the first thing that you need to do is to question your thoughts. And questioning your thoughts is, is important and it's useful. And I found it uh, uh, works in my life as well, right? As some of my, of my students, uh, they say that it works for them as well. But it has to become a habit. You can't question it one day and next day, that you know, or one time and then the fall, all, all, all day it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. But you're letting that, allowing these thoughts that um, come every day to just continue coming. You have to, what we're doing is we're trying to rewire our um, subconscious way of reacting to these thoughts that always come to mind, right? And so I always say to my clients, the first thing to do is to question it because the question, what, you, what happens when you question your thoughts is that you now take back control of the thoughts. You see, before the thoughts were coming and coming and coming, it was just coming at you and you had no control over it because what you did was just accept what, the th what those voices were saying to you and you just accept them to be true to be true and then all of a sudden you realize now you start feeling depressed or feeling sad or feeling anxious whatever the thoughts are kind of manufacturing in your mind right and then you start feeling these thoughts you start feeling jealous or you start feeling um, you know just miserable because you've allowed these thoughts to take control of your mind and 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 uh, as it takes control of your mind then it just goes down into your emotions and then eventually you start to behave uh, as a result of the thoughts, but you don't realize that there are steps between your thoughts and your behavior that you can control. So the first step, guys, is to control your thoughts by stopping, pausing, and questioning it. Because the moment you stop and question it, now it does not have the power to run rampant through your mind and just uh, and just dictates how you feel and how you behave, right? So the first thing is questioning it. So how, what are some of the questions that you can, can, can ask these thoughts? Is this true? That's the first thing. Is this true? Because a lot of times the thoughts that we are having, they are not true. It's just something that you made up in your mind, something that you decide that was real when you have no evidence of that, right? And the next question you're going to ask is, what is the evidence that this is true? Is this true? Well, uh, I think so, it's not true. Well, the next question should solve that. What is the evidence that this is true, right? A lot of in, uh, individuals in my, uh, you know, when I work with them, what happens is that they have a lot of evidence, a lot of evidence that what the, the things that are coming to mind will they you know that that these things are, are are true or or they're you know or they're not true but they never really took the time to write them down so the other thing that i that is important to do is to before you even start this process to be able to manage your thoughts is to write down what is true about these things these thoughts that are always coming to mind write down the thoughts that you that's always coming and write it down and say okay write them down and say is this thought true is this true and if it's true what can I do to change it? If, you, if there's something that you can do to change it, then do it, right? The next thing is that if it's not true, then why am I worried about it? What is there, what, what, why am I worried about this thing if it's not true, right? If you look at the evidence and it's not true, then why are you ask yourself and then go do something else, right? Now, if it's not true, then why am I worried about it? If it's true and there's nothing you can do to change it, for example, in the first instance, it said, if it's true, then what, what can I do to change it? And there's something you can do, then change, do that thing. But if it's not true, 
then why am I worrying about it? Then the next sequence is, if it is true and there's nothing that you can do to change it, can you find a lesson or a positive benefit from this thing, this thing that you're thinking about, that these thoughts are bringing to you, right? Can you find a positive, some, a lesson that you would have learned from that thing? Perhaps it taught you to be more careful of the people that you allow in your circle. These things, right? Whatever is causing those thoughts. Maybe it thought it, it taught you that you know only you can only change yourself and you cannot change other people. Maybe confirm that to you, right? Or maybe it taught you to you know who your real friends are, right? Maybe you're there having thoughts about how people are not there for you or whatever it might be. Maybe this situation taught you about who your real friends are. So always learn the lesson from this situation, guys. Always find a positive benefit from everything that happens to you. There's always something positive. It might be very tiny or minuscule, but if you can pull out that positive benefit from that terrible situation, then you can move forward in a better way. It is almost impossible to in ignore all these thoughts. You can, t you know, like it's, it's, it's like these thoughts coming like a, a sandstorm. It's like it's just uh, it's just blasting. It's blasting against wherever you're hiding from uh, uh, from these thoughts, right? You have this place. You go inside your house and you're hiding from the th sandstorm. But you know what? The th you can still hear it. You can still hear it. You can still hear it in your mind, right? And if you're caught into it, you'll still feel the sting of the tiny grains of sand on every exposed surface of your skin. So it is the same with thoughts, guys. When we try to ignore them, we can still feel the pressure of them vying for our attention. And if we do nothing because we are caught up with the emotions that these thoughts bring, we are sure to feel the sting on those areas of our lives where we are bruised and raw from previous hurts and pain from these thoughts. So what do we do? If you're trying to manage only your thoughts, you may find it isn't working perfectly or too well. So what else, what else is there? You can take action. The next thing to add to, to questioning your thoughts is to take action. Take action and do what? Whatever is necessary to create the feeling or outcome you want. It is possible to do rather than to think or weigh to changing the emotions that bombard us as a result of our thoughts. So we need both the questioning of our thoughts as well as doing something different, all right? So what does this look like? Say for example, you're in a funk and you want to get out of that funk and you're you know, thinking happy thoughts alone will not get you there. However, thinking happy thoughts and doing things that make you happy will get you there. This means, guys, that you first have to prepare and know what are these things that make you happy. What do you enjoy doing? The reason I, I, I suggest that you have a list of things that you enjoy doing that makes you happy before these thoughts come and you try to manage them is because we all know that when we have these negative thoughts, what happens is that we are so consumed by these thoughts that you forget everything that is positive or everything that would can make you happy. So if you don't have these things right at the in top of your awareness ready so that when these things happen, then you can know that, okay, I'm going to question my thoughts and then um, find out what I learned that was positive from it. What was the lesson that was positive, even when it's a negative situation and there's nothing positive, you know, there's no negative, there's no positive way of thinking about it, but there are positive uh, results and positive lessons that I've learned from it. What is it that you can, what, 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 what kind of behavior is it that you enjoy doing that you know always, always worked to change your mood to being happy? Well, maybe you, um, maybe you like, you have a favorite song. Maybe you have a favorite song. Music can be so healing, guys. Maybe you have a favorite song. Put on that mu that song and just listen to it. Or put on, if it's a dancing song, put on that song and just dance to it. If that is what you find make, makes you happy. If you find that going to get your, na when your nails are done or, you know, get your nails done makes you happy, then go to the spa and get your nails done. It makes you happy. 
If you find that outdoors, going outdoors into the innate into nature makes you happy, go and do that. If you find that playing with your pet makes you happy, go and do that, right? But find things. If you find that having flowers in your home makes you happy, buy yourself some flowers, right? But always have things that makes you happy around so you can always turn to those things when you're having these thoughts that constantly bombard you that are negative, but you know, you, you just can't seem to get a hold of, right? So what you need first of all, I say, is to question those things, question the thoughts, that stops it right away and gives you back control of those thoughts, right? And the next thing to do is to um, find a behavior, a behavior, find something that you enjoy doing, that makes you, you know, that makes you happy all the time. If it's comedy, watching some uh, movie that's a, uh, that's a comedy or whatever it is that makes you know, that makes you happy, everybody's going to be different. So find that one thing or couple of things that make you happy and focus on those things, doing those things. Because when you're doing something, it takes your thoughts, it, it, believe, believe it or not, your thoughts will change. When you're doing something that makes you happy, your thoughts will then change and, and your, your focus is not so much on that negative thing anymore. One thing I, 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 that you shouldn't do is to find a friend who loves to listen to your, um, you complaining and, and be bemoaning your circumstances. Don't do that. Because all that that is going to do is just to continue to the, the negative cycle of thoughts and make you feel worse off than you did before. Don't do it. Focus instead on questioning those thoughts. Then when you question those thoughts, find a behavior, find something that you actually do, right? Whether it be working out, it can be anything that you know you enjoy doing and that makes you happy to go and do to change that mood. All right, guys, I hope that helps in some way. Uh, this is Christine, your Relationship and Mindset Master, Dr. Angel Leverage for Change. Take care now. Bye.